Since Nigeria democratic system of government began 23 years ago, there have been different policies of government with different political parties and politicians playing politics in Nigeria. These as a way have generated mixed feelings from people from all walks of life. The special advisor on political issues to the Imo State Governor and the Transition Monitoring Group Coordinator Delta State Chapter carpets the Nigerian policies and politics related issues in Nigeria. Social media, almost every Nigerian now is a political commentator. But you still find out that we are still affected by nepotism, we are still affected by religion. We are not talking about what the candidates will bring. We are talking about the faith he worships. Not minding that our constitution says Nigeria is a secular state. People make a lot of heavy weather out of faith, which shouldn't be anything to do with performance. Do Ni Americans, do they remember that uh, Biden is a Catholic? They don't remember. They don't remember that Trump was also Catholic. They are concerned about the dividends of democracy, the policies the, the, ruling, uh, the, the ruling party or the incumbent will bring to bear. For example, in America, they are talking about immigration. They are not talking about faith. The description of politics in Nigeria and policies is, is below expectation. That's my first description of it. It's below expectation because for successive 23 years on broken democracy, we ought to have gone beyond where we are today then policies have not been so constant as it were. Policies have been fluctuating. One government to another government, policies, policies some assault every time. There's no continuity in even the policies of government. Whereas government ought to be a continuum, but what we have in Nigerian policies is a some assault every time. Policies of Nigeria do not affect the rich. It only affects the poor. It's like the policies are made to affect the poor, to strangulate the poor masses. How would you describe it, for instance, this CBN new policies, that when the poor goes against it, they come against you? On his part, a Niger Delta youth activist described Nigerian policies as a joke, as a political advisor to the Imo State Governor call on Nigerians to be focused. Nigeria has been a joke of centuries. This is so because over the years we've seen an interplay of old manifestos being redesigned. Old cabals of politicians reassemble themselves under different platforms of political affiliations and come back to exploit the masses. So there are still issues that our people need to move ahead of and treat them as non sequitur in law, what to call non sequitur, things that are of no moment. So the discourse is still not as it should be, but we have crossed the 50% margin in political discourse in Nigeria. Meanwhile, as Nigeria prepares for the 2023 general elections, Nigerians from all walks of life are of the opinion that policies and politics will reshape the democratic system of Nigeria. From Warren Delta State Daily Fast on reporting for Galaxy. <laughs>
by and large, the government, in quotes, may have good policies on paper, but the, the application of those policies is, is dependent on the policies of that government. Take, for instance, prior to 2015, there were campaigns that Nigeria, the Naira is going to be equivalent to dollar, the lot of uh, employment is going to be on ground, the ASU is no longer going to be on strike. But at the end of the day, we fall back, mm -hmm. we even went below mm -hmm. where we were at the time. So the implication is that politicians have mastered the way of pushing their own personal interests and make it look as if it's in the public interest. Mm. So they push it aside as a policy, policy framework. No, but uh, at the end of the day, it is their personal interest yes. that sways the outcome. Yes, I'm not talking, talk, not talking about personal. I said, let us start from the, uh, from the center to the periphery. Very well. Right. Let us start from you, your own personal experience of, of government policy and politics. Either it has affected you positively or negatively. What the, the policy of every government affects every individual. Uh -huh, your own, what the, uh, your own experience. Yes, what, the way Nigeria is at the moment mm -hmm. is the way I feel it as much. Mm -hmm. Take, for instance, the recent um, policy on the redesigning of Naira mm -hmm. and so many other policies of this government. Mm -hmm. Of course, the government, in quotes, may have good intentions. Like I said earlier, it is not enough to have good intentions. What is more important is the ability, the political will, to drive those agenda. So if a policy of government has not been properly streamlined in a way that it will affect citizens directly, I will be affected. I don't want to say, use myself as a yastic how the policies of government has affected me, but the truth of the matter is that I'm, not, I'm part of Nigeria, I'm part of the society, I'm part of the system. And whatever policies of the government turns out to citizens, mm. I'm directly or indirectly affected by it. Okay. So now, the second leg of it is that government comes in when they are campaigning, or when they are campaigning, they bring out uh, electoral promises. These promises now, when they get into government, now translate into policies. But in implementing the policy, they add politics. Is that how it should be? No, not at all. Please. The truth of the matter is that every politics is local. Mm -hmm. That's what they say. Every politics is local. And there are no two democracies in the world that are the same. Yeah, democracy as we understand it in theory is people's government. Where the people determines how they are going to be governed in terms of voting credible candidates. But in reality, especially in Nigerian context, it is not always like that. Mm -hmm. So you see politicians turn all manner of promises you know, to citizens during electionary campaign. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, when they get into power, they decide to you know, do whatever that will interest them for their own benefit and their cronies. So, and of course, if you see the way politics have been played in Nigeria from our first republic, it has always been people's driven. They'll make it as if people's are, people are part of mm. that uh, politics mm. or policy of government. Mm. But at the end of the day, we find ourselves. And the, but one of the major issues Nigeria has consistently been presented with is the issue of divide and rule. We have always had issues where, instead of looking at the credibility of a candidate, we start asking and interrogating where such candidates come from. Which type of religion? I listened to one of the interviews mm, here. Mm. Which part of which religion does the person part uh, of the profess? Comes come from. You know, issue, issue of what political party do you belong to? Discarding as competence. As far as I'm concerned, mm. political parties in Nigeria do not have ideologies. Good. It is about their own interests. So you cannot even single out a political party and say this is what they represent, because at the end of the day, it will fall back to square one. So, but going forward, we ought to look beyond the noses, beyond our noses. We have to look the antecedent of those who are presenting themselves for election. We have to do away with politics of tribe, okay. politics of tongue, politics okay. of religion. We are talking about politicians. We will now look at it now individually. 
because it is one person who now turned around to become a politician. His background or her background, does it matter before going out into the public? Yes, it to does. To present itself? It does. Lily Livard, somebody who you can trust or somebody who has some shady character? No, your antecedents yes. is a mirror we can look at. I said this is what we have done in the past. Mm -hmm. um, you cannot divorce your past from the present. It's like a deductive reasoning. Mm -hmm. You start from the known to the unknown. Mm -hmm. So before you come into power, what were, what were you doing? What is your background educationally? Because the world is moving faster than we think. Our constitution still maintains that for you to uh, contest for even the highest office in the land, you mustn't even be a schoolholder. It's just for you to, you know, have at no least permission. your attendance to uh, secondary school or primary school, as the case may be. So you see that we have not put so much attachment on the credibility of individuals because the education plays a role. Education refines a man. When mm. I say man, I mean man they in quote, man or woman. Mm. So we cannot, in this age and time, begin to grapple with people who are still looking for their primary or secondary school certificates, whom we cannot say, this is what you have done in the past 10, 20, or 30 years. Who cannot say, this is the source of your income. This is where you have worked. This is the people that have been, you have represented in one way or the other. People just come from the blues and come to power. And that is where the problem is. I think that change is a constant thing. And sometimes I feel this might actually be wrong when you judge people by their background. Because it could actually change. Education might not mean the person will not be able to be a good leader. How about that? No, uh, uh, nobody is judging them by their background. I'm saying that nobody is a suicide. We are not uh, superhumans to know what is in the mind of any person. Even the devil know it's not the thought of man. But I've said, the little we can do for ourselves is to interrogate those who are presenting themselves to power and be able to make out you know, one or two things from their previous engagements before mm -hmm. coming to power. Because you, honestly speaking, you cannot divorce someone's environment, someone's past from present or what's the capacity of what the person can do especially when he's an adult it's usually very difficult to change an old, old habit mm. so we have to know because nigeria needs a credible leader 2023 presents us with another golden opportunity to rewrite our wrongs and that is where i also commend programs like this we are in a festive season where everybody, you know, nobody cares about what the policy of government is all about. Currently, everybody is traveling, trying to eat and make merry. But in the midst of that, Ugala Television still found it worthy to present society and citizens with this type of a program that will sensitize them, educate them, and constantly remind them of the need to continue to engage in election and policies of government. Thank you. Um, I like you made a statement some few seconds ago that some people will just come out from the blues, and of course, if someone comes from the blues, it means that he just comes from nowhere. The background is shaky or even very dubious, and we see them. Most of them in the national assembly, even some people who come and run as governors, the pedigree, the experience is not there. That yes, you say this is what we can attach to you as your experience before you come out now. Uh, for us to trust you. Of course, in between, the political issue will come up, they, are, they, will be, they, will, they will package themselves. The question is, why is it that people are now cowed or caught, they, 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 can't, they can't see between the line to pick somebody who can give them quality leadership as a result of their experience? There are so many factors responsible to that. Mm -hmm. I have said that every politics is local. Mm -hmm. And the way we play our politics determines the way people select their, their leaders. You cannot select leaders outside your society. Those who become leaders tomorrow are part and parcel of the society. And the way, the kind of non cultural norms, the beliefs, the acceptability of certain things will also play a role in the individuals who will eventually ascend to the power. In Nigeria, for instance, our politics is still largely money-based. You cannot, no matter how credible you are, if you don't have the financial well with that, you are going nowhere. So you see that we are presented with limited choices. 
because it can't go beyond those that have been presented before us. Mm -hmm. God cannot come from heaven to mm. present himself for election. Mm. So that money politics is also a factor. How election, primary elections or political parties are conducted. Because at the end of the day, we don't have individual, candid individual candidates. You must come under a political platform. And whoever those political uh, parties present is who we are going to choose from. Secondly, we also have, before now, we have citizens who have been docile. Mm -hmm. You know, they have been sleeping over their rights in terms of being awake to the need that politics is all encompassing. Politics shouldn't be left with politicians. Citizens should embrace politics because what citizens do determines the kind of leaders they get. So when you look at the caliber of citizens and the caliber of leaders, they are the same. In fact, yesterday I saw a video of a, of, um, a, a shop where someone, they are selling rice this Christmas period and 50 kg a bag of rice, see somebody emptying it mm -hmm. to remove maybe one or two painters. Mm -hmm. That's the psychology mm -hmm. of cities. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's trendy, Tomorrow, right? somebody will say that the president or the governor, as the case may be, is not doing well. But within at your own, level, yes, at that level, uh, you see the mindset of an uh, average Nigerian. <laughs> so we have to change this, this perception. <laughs> it is. So we have, in a way, normalized abnormality. <laughs> and that is where when a politician gets to power mm. and you come to campaign and say he, he pays salary paying salary has become an achievement, achievement. Mm. what kind of life <laughs> somebody wants is it oh, he constructs roads so you cannot use salary as achievement why would you withhold someone's oh, salary provide classroom blocks you can imagine that so we have reduced development to that level yes. that any anybody can Personal rise up life. and say this is what i have done please vote me and you see us voting the person. Exactly. I just want to say this before I 